everyone to welcome to the uh, Simply Soccer podcast. This is what number seventeen or eighteen or something or along those lines. And I have a couple of questions to answer for you guys in this one. Uh, first and foremost, uh, just some reminders: um, if you're seeing some footage that's playing while this podcast is going off, that's something that was recommended by me uh, to me by a few people. They wanted to see some footage in the background being played of like drills, games, things like that. Um, if you are not seeing that and you're seeing the usual background, it's because it was taking way too long to process um, the podcast with that background. Um, these podcasts take about, I don't even know, like five, six, seven hours sometimes just to to process once I'm finished them. So adding footage may make it go even longer, which will mean I can't do that. But if it t- takes around the same amount of time, um, you might be seeing like match footage and stuff right now. So I don't know if it's going to work. So just if you're seeing it, it worked. If you're not, it didn't. All right, guys. Also, make sure you're following me on Instagram at Simply Soccer Pro. Uh, I'm going to be producing a lot more content for Instagram. I'm going to be putting like, um, I can put like one minute videos on there. So I'm going to do kind of like motivational stuff, um, some drills. Like I'm going to put like how to do some drills on there, certain things like that. Um, so make sure you're following me on there. I definitely want to try and grow that um, because there's definitely some stuff I can do on there that I can't necessarily do on YouTube. So if you're not already following me on Instagram, it's Simply Soccer Pro. It'll be in the description as well, but Simply Soccer Pro. Make sure you're uh, following me on there. Okay, so let's get into these questions. I have two right here, and I might add some of my own if we don't if we have enough time at the end. Um, but these are the two I'm going to focus on. So the first one is how to always be humble and not believe you're the best, like Iniesta. Um, and this is a very, very slippery slope here. Um, it's not that Iniesta doesn't probably believe he's the best. I mean, he has Messi in his team, and he probably concedes the fact that Messi is the best. Um, but Iniesta is also a very confident player. Like he's Humility doesn't mean you don't think you're good. That's not what humility is is. Um, People, I think, seem to think that humility means, oh, you can't admit that you're good at something, or you can't do this because then someone will feel bad about it. Um, That's not what humility is. That's kind of pandering to other people. That's, you know, being a people pleaser. So it's like if you know you're good at something, but you say you're not good at it because you don't want other people to think you're cocky or arrogant, or you don't want them to feel bad, right? Here's the way I look at it. If you work hard at something, if you put in a shit ton of effort, if you're out there every day grinding, putting in the effort, getting control of your diet, you know, being proactive about things, then in my opinion, I have no problem with you admitting that you're good. If you have trained your, like worked your ass off to the point where you're really good at something and you openly say, yeah, I'm, I'm good at this. I have no problem with that. You see, that's not not humility. That's not arrogance. That's not cockiness. See, arrogance and cockiness comes into play when you haven't earned the right to say that you are good at something. Because I've known, I've known a million players throughout my life who haven't been good, who haven't practiced in their own time, who haven't put in the work, who say that they're amazing, that they're good. Oh yeah, I'm better than this guy, and I'm better than this guy, and I could, I could run rings around this guy, who can't. They just say it, you know, because they're trying to either impress people, or they're trying to stroke their own ego. That's arrogance, right? That's arrogance. There's there's a difference between um, between real arrogance and just like this perceived arrogance. Now there are people who will see others as arrogant no matter what. Um, for example, um, there'll be people who see certain professional athletes and think, oh, they're arrogant. Like one of the biggest um, uh, sports athletes that people see as arrogant is. Cristiano Ronaldo. People believe he's arrogant, but in my eyes, I have no problem with Ronaldo being like, I think I'm the best in the world, or him saying, you know, I'm really good, because he is, and it's not an accident. He put in a ton of work to become the player that he is. I mean, if you take a look at his career, he obviously um, was very talented, but you take a look at how much he learned and how much his game changed, and you know this guy put in a ton of work, and it's not just impressive to me, like, how good at stepovers and skills and how, how fit he is. Like, that takes a lot of work. It, what impresses me most about him is his ability to learn, because you can see in the easy or the early days of his Manchester United career, he was doing way too much stuff. He was doing way too much skills, dribbling a little too much, and eventually was getting found out. At some point, he must have sat down and thought, okay, I need to adjust this. I need to change this. I need to learn to be more effective. And he did. So in my eyes, that's not arrogance. I don't see Cristiano Ronaldo as an arrogant person or player. 
I don't see him as that because you cannot be, and I don't think you can be an arrogant player, an arrogant athlete, and make it to the top. I don't think you can. I really don't think you can because I guarantee that although in the media, and you have to remember, we, we've gone over media bias before, which is believing, you know, like a very short story that the media tells you because, you know, you don't know the whole story from just listening to what the media says about Ronaldo or an interview that he has and all of that. It's the same with players like Zlatan Ibrahimovic and anyone else you think is is really arrogant. Now, here's an example of an arrogant player, I think, who's arrogant, who doesn't, who shouldn't be, who, who basically thinks he's the best but isn't, and it's Mario Balotelli or Bentner or someone like that. Um, now, these players are obviously very talented but I don't think they put in the work. And so their arrogance comes back to bite them. Th- that's arrogance, thinking you're the best when you have not even worked or come close or you know done what you need to do to be considered the best. I mean, you can't just wake up one day and be the best. You have to work towards that. You have to put in a ton of effort. You have to, I mean, Ronaldo, I mean, I, I forget what it was, but it's like he practices like six hours a day or works out six hours a day or something like that. He's, he's so regimented, so disciplined that he built himself up into one of the best. It's the same with Messi. It's the same with any player that's really been at the peak, who, that's been at that very high level. So let's determine what humility is and what arrogance is. Uh, I'll use another athlete as an example, and this is one of my favorite examples. Michael Jordan, who I'm sure many of you know, um, was considered the best basketball player of all time, and he was known for being very arrogant. Like, the the public saw him as very arrogant. They saw him as very egotistical. Um, he would always, in interviews, be like, yeah, I'm going to destroy this guy. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to run rings around him and all that. Um, but then he would go on and actually do it. And the thing they said about Jordan, and this is, what, this is how I, I judge true humility, is they said Jordan, although he appeared arrogant externally, he appeared um, arrogant um, to the media, to the public. He was one of the most coachable players ever. And what that means is he listened to his coaches. He took their advice. He did not see himself above and beyond people. He did not see himself above and beyond learning. He saw himself as someone who could continue to get better, that could continue to learning. All the smack talking and all that, that's, that's, that's just an act. Just look way beyond that. There are plenty of people who do smack talking and all that and can't back it up. And that's the majority of people. But Michael Jordan, when the cameras were not on, when no one was looking, he was asking his coach, you know, how do I improve this? His coach would tell him and he would listen intently. You know, he was asking other players, you know, what do you think about this? He would listen to the advice of others and he would determine, this is something that can help me improve. And in fact, there was actually a very cool story. There was a, a on, when he was on the Bulls, um, the Chicago Bulls, um, a player came up to him and he, he told Jordan, you know, I noticed you, you were struggling a little with this. Why not try this? And he said he was blown away by how much Jordan listened to him offer, and how much he listened to his feedback and then not just listened to him but actually applied what he said. And the player who gave Jordan advice was just like a bench player. He was – I don't even know his name. That's how – you know, much of a, you know, not, I mean, he was a professional athlete, so he was pretty good, but compared to like Jordan, he was like nowhere near his level. Yet Jordan didn't care about that. He still listened to him and he implemented that advice. An arrogant person is someone who won't listen to advice. An arrogant person is that person who thinks, you know what? Nobody knows better than me. I can't learn anything from anybody else because I'm so great. That's arrogance. If you are unwilling to learn, if you are unwilling to learn from people who know something that you don't or can even, you know, help you improve in some area, if you are not willing to learn, listen to people, because there's always going to be someone more experienced or better than you at something, it doesn't matter what it is, right? There's always going to be someone. I mean, there's exceptions. I mean, Messi right now, there isn't, I don't think there's a player better than him on the planet. I think he's the best in history, so you know it's hard for him. But he still had heroes when he grew up. He still had people he learned from. He still listened to all his coaches, and I guarantee he still does. He still learns on a consistent basis. So that's the difference. If you're someone who isn't willing to learn you can and you consider yourself good, um, I think you're arrogant, right? I think you're, you're arrogant. It takes a lot of hard work and all that. Now, you should believe you are good. I do have – I do think you should believe in your ability – but you need to back that up. If you if you need to believe in your ability, but also be willing to always improve, be willing to learn, be willing to say, you know what, my my finishing or my shooting is amazing, but it can get better. Or maybe you have a move that you're really good at. Yeah, this is I'm really good at this, but maybe I can tweak it a little and improve it. You know, watching watching people and saying, you know what, I can take a, I can take something from his game. You know, whatever it may be, 
you have to always be willing to learn. You have to be willing to move forward because as soon as you think that you've reached the top, as soon as you think like I'm the best and I can't learn anymore, it's okay to think you're the best. Okay, like I don't care. You you, you do what you need to do to instill that confidence in yourself. But as soon as you think I'm the best, I don't need to learn anymore. I'm the best. I don't need to train anymore. I'm the best. I don't need to do anything anymore because I'm the best. That's arrogance. You've lost yourself, and it will affect you. So, the question: How to always be humble and not and b- not believe you're the best, like Iniesta? I just want to make sure we're not thinking, "Oh, I should I should pander to people." If you're being humble and want to, in order to appease others or not make other people feel bad, you need to stop that. Um, or in my opinion, you need to stop that. Remember, anything I say here is just my opinion. So you don't have to take everything I say here or anything really as I say here as gospel. This is just my advice to you. This is sometimes my advice to myself too. Um, but just remember what true humility is. True humility is willing to go out there and grind. It's willing to listen to advice. It's willing to learn. It's willing to work hard. It's willing to work even harder than you have before. That's what humility is. Humility isn't like, oh, if someone asks you, are you really good at soccer? This is not, okay, here's an example of what humility is not. So let's say someone asks me, are you good at soccer? And I go, ah, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that good. I'm, I'm okay, you know, because I don't want to appear arrogant. You see, I'm trying to avoid appearing arrogant by just kind of, oops, kind of dancing around it, right? In reality, I know I'm a good player, but that doesn't mean I don't think I can get better. I think I can get much better. I think there's a lot I can improve in, always. Um, so that's a lot different. So if someone asks me, I'll be like, yeah, I am good, but there's there's nothing wrong with saying you're good. Yeah, I'm, I'm a good player. There's a lot I can improve in, but I am a good player, right? That's not lacking in humility. That's not arrogance. You know, we, we live... I always say this. Well, we live in a society where it seems, and I, I still struggle with confidence issues. I had confidence issues for the longest time. It affected me so much as a player. And the one, the reason I all reasons I always talk about the importance of the mental side of football is because I don't want you guys to have to fall into the same trap I did in having to think, oh, I have to be humble all the time because this is something I fell into, thinking I can't admit I'm good at something. Because I want to be humble. I want to be humble. I don't want to be arrogant like this guy or that guy. Um, and that's not good because a lot of the times, because I was pandering to people, because I was saying, you know, I'm not really that good. You know, I'm, I'm average. You know, I was trying to not be arrogant. Because I was doing that, I started believing that. I started believing, oh, you're, you know, you're just average, right? You start believing those kind of things, and it's going to hurt you in the long run. So I don't want you to fall into that. That's why I emphasize the mental side of the game all the time, because it's the side of the game I struggled with for a long time, my confidence and all this. And it wasn't until later, I mean much later, maybe even recently, that I was able to get that under control and find strategies and everything. Um, And it wasn't really until maybe a couple of years ago that I learned the true meaning of what humility was or is and, and what arrogance is. Okay, so don't fall into that trap. Don't fall into the trap of you have to tell people like you're not good. You should believe you're good, but you should also believe you can always get better. That's what humility is. That's humility isn't pandering to people. So if you're if you're saying anything and it's to be a people pleaser, it's to appease others, it's to, um, you know, not make someone who hasn't worked hard feel bad. Because, I mean, I've been in this situation many times or not me myself. I've seen other people who won't admit that they're good because they don't want to make others feel bad. But look, you can't be worried about how other people react to what you say in that manner. Um, you can't be worried about that because if someone's not going to will is not willing to put in the work, it's very easy to say something like, Oh, you're so arrogant. It's very easy for someone to say that, you know, what's hard is putting in hard work. You know, what's hard being consistent. You know, what's hard getting your diet under control. You know, what's hard, you know, making sure you're disciplined enough to recover. You know, these things are hard. So if you're doing all those things, don't worry about what someone who isn't doing those things is saying about you. Seriously, don't. If someone's saying, oh, you're so arrogant because you think you're good. Oh, wow, I think I'm good. I've worked hard to be good. Hmm, yeah, you know what? I've worked my ass off. I've been consistent. I've done all this stuff. I should think I'm bad. Yeah, you're right. I should I should not consider myself good because it might hurt your feelings. Look, you can't get into that trap. Um, if you're working hard, if you're doing that, um, if you're putting in the effort, if you're trying to get better each and every time, Don't worry about it. You should think you're good. And again, this comes to the mental side of the game. You need to believe that you're a good player. You need to believe that you're a good player that can continue to get better and better and better. And then you take the action. Then you have to implement. Then you have to do the drills. Then you have to stay consistent. Then you have to um, stay 
within a certain eating regiment or eating routine that you you know everything you need to be disciplined um and as long as you're doing that don't worry about it now there is you know there is a borderline like michael jordan for example did call people out and go like i'm gonna run rings around you now i wouldn't necessarily do that i wouldn't call people out. i would be more silent in that and just be like you know what I, i'm more of a let my actions speak louder than my words um but again just recognize what true humility is and what true arrogance is Arrogance is the person who thinks he knows all and doesn't want to learn. Humility is the person willing to learn, willing to admit that they can get better, willing to put in the effort then to get better, right? You can say as much as you want, but it's when you're putting in that effort, when you're actually putting in the practice, when you're actually going out most days to practice and sticking with your routines, that's when you're humble, okay? So don't worry about trying to please someone else. Seriously, that's going to hold you back so much. It held me back way too much when I was younger, um... So you don't want to fall into that. So I hope that makes sense. Um, so that's what I believe humility is. And so when just to relate this to Iniesta, because that's what you told me, you asked me about. Um, Iniesta probably is very humble, um, but I guarantee you, he, you know, behind the scenes, he has a huge amount of belief in his ability. He thinks he's a great player. He he's not going to like be like, you know, what, I'm not the best, so I suck. He's going to be like, he might say, well, Messi is the best, my teammate's the best. But I'm a fantastic player myself, right? Um, he's not going to think that he's bad. So that, I just want to make sure we're not falling into the trap of thinking humility means, oh, I have to, I can't think that I'm good. Okay. Next question. So that was um, that was pretty long. So that, yeah, we're about 17 minutes in. So that's good. That gives us um, a little bit of time to answer this, like 13 minutes. Um, does futsal training help soccer players? It's the next question. Um, yes. Oh my God. Yes, it does. Um, if you guys want to know one of the reasons Brazilian players, Argentinian players, like South American players are so bloody skillful, futsal is one of the reasons and street ball, which is very similar to futsal, um, because it's on a fast surface. Futsal is great. I wish they had more futsal here in the States. I wish they did futsal in other places because futsal, you get a lot of touches. It's quick. You need skill. It's fast. Um, it's just such a great thing to do. I play indoor soccer a lot, um, especially during the winter, obviously, when it's in the colder seasons, and it's usually like 5v5 or 6v6 in a very small space, um, and it's very quick. You get a lot of touches. You have to be very quick. You have to be on your toes. You have to be aware of everything around you. I mean, if you want to learn how to... Um, a lot of you ask me questions about how to improve my vision or how to improve your soccer IQ... Indoor football or futsal training is a great way to do that because you have to act so quick. You know, you don't have time on the ball. There's not, you won't have a second on the ball unless for some reason the team is really bad and disorganized or something. Um, but it's so quick. Um, and that's why I just love it so much because you get a ton of touches, a ton of shots. You get, you know, you have to move around a lot. It's good for fitness. Um, so yeah, I think futsal is great now it's not the only thing you should be doing you know you need to be playing 11 v 11 in some form if you want to you know learn how to function in that kind of game because there's a lot a lot of differences but if you're looking to develop like quick feet good skill good touch good i mean you look at players like ronaldinho he played futsal coutinho played futsal i don't know if pele did um but there are many other examples of famous Brazilian players and famous Argentinians who either played street football or futsal or both. Um, and street football would just be like, you know, playing with your mates on the street. Um, and which I think is really good too. I think um, playing on the street's really good. Um, because again, it's a, it's a hard surface. The ball moves fast. It's fun. You have a lot of touches, you know, all this. I mean, I personally used to play after school with my friends all the time and we we didn't play on the street we played on grass field but it was tight spaces we get a lot of touches it was fun sometimes on a tennis court um actually when i was younger i used to play there were um a bunch of i think south american or um, not south american sorry mexicans and peruvians who used to play at fields near me um i used to go play with them all the time so really just make sure you're getting out playing a lot but back to futsal training definitely think if you have a, like a futsal team that plays near you or um whatever futsal practices or whatever it is i would get on it i would honestly take that opportunity you know as a kid i didn't really have the uh too many futsal places near me if any i didn't know of any honestly but if you have that opportunity absolutely it's great for your development it's great for things like dribbling um ball skills close control quick thinking i mean a lot of things okay so 
Sorry, I actually had to pause there, so I'm trying to remember where we were. Um, but yeah, basically, conclusion is yes, futsal training will help soccer players. Um, remember, like the more touches you get on the ball, the more involved you are with the ball, the more you're playing, the better you're going to become, especially if you're a younger player. I mean, it's there's a reason I recommend people or players just to dribble a size one ball around the house as you're going through the house. I made a video a long, maybe not a long time ago, but like maybe half a year ago called how to get 5,000 touches on the ball every day or something like that. And it was literally, I just said, take the ball everywhere, literally everywhere you can. Like maybe not at school. I mean, if you can get away with it, I used to take it to school um, and there was no problem. If there was an empty hallway, I'd put that ball down and I would just dribble around until I was at the end of the hallway. Um, do that in your house. Like you wake up, have a ball at your feet from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed. And I don't even mean you have to do drills. Just like as you're walking, dribble it around. You'll get tons of touches on the ball. And the more touches you get on the ball, the more familiar you get with the ball. This will seriously help you improve so much. And this is like, there's actually a famous quote, I think, by Thomas Edison. And he said, the people, this is not verbatim. This is not like, don't like don't quote me on this. Um, but it's something along the lines of, um, the people that succeed are the ones that hustle while they wait or while they rest. Um, so what are you saying? And, and this is something I've been trying to do recently is like, for example, if I create a video and I, I, I produce it, um, it takes my computer a little bit for depending on the size of the video to process the video. So like I'm watching the bar go across 20%, 30%, 40%. I don't have to be watching that. I could be doing something in that moment. So maybe I should go out and kick around, maybe read a book, right? I don't have to wait right for that to finish or you know maybe um if you're finding multifaceted things to do as well um so for example if you go to go brush your teeth just dribble a soccer ball to the bathroom you just got touches on the ball while doing something you were going to do anyway okay so that's something i recommend as well i mean that's just another thing we could throw in there just i have a size one ball i'm actually looking at it right now um and i take this I try to remember to take this everywhere. Like today, I've, I went to make something to eat, and I dribbled it to the kitchen. As the thing was cooking, I started dribbling it around. Um, I took it back to my room um, while I was getting something. You know, these are still, you know, by the end of the day, if you do this every time you're in the house and you're going somewhere, you're going to get thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon thousands of touches. Now, imagine you do that every single day. You're going to get hundreds of thousands of touches on the ball very quickly. And... That will, I mean, that's going to improve your touch, your dribbling, everything really very, very quickly, right? Repetition, repetition, repetition. So definitely recommend that. And futsal I love because that, again, you'll get plenty of touches. It's very skillful. So yes, does help soccer players. And yes, you should join a team if you uh, get the chance. All right. So we're actually, those are the two questions and we're only at 23 minutes. So either I'm going to have to come up with another question right now or... Uh, do something else. And I think I'll ask you guys, I mean, um, not there's not too many of you who listen to the podcast. I think out of my subscribers, the average view count on a podcast after like a, I don't know, like a week, it's like 500. Um, but for you guys who do listen, um, kind of, you know, I, I identify you guys as kind of the more serious players, usually not always, but a lot of the time the more serious players because you're willing to, again, like we talked about humility Earlier, you're willing to learn, you're willing to take advice, you're willing to implement that advice. Um, what kind of videos do you speci you guys specifically want to see on the channel? Um, I get a lot of requests for certain videos, and obviously I can only produce so many, and when it comes down to it, I'm going to produce the ones that either, one, I feel will help everyone the most, two, that are fun for me to make, and I like making, like the raw shooting video was fun to me for me to make, and other videos like that are fun, to me to fun for me to make. Um, and those are usually my two criteria and sometimes a little, sometimes like, will this even get views is sometimes a criteria as well because I am trying to grow the channel here. But what kind of videos do you guys want to see? Specifically, what videos do you want to see? Now, I'm not saying I can make it. And, and guys, here's a, here's a little thing. The worst way to have me, to encourage me to make a certain video is to comment on a video saying something like, I came to your channel and I didn't see this video yet. When are you doing this video? And to keep saying that over and over again is just going to make me so frustrated. You know, I can only produce so many videos and ultimately I can, you know, I'm going to produce what I want to produce, okay? Um, so when someone comes and says something like that, it, it really gets under my skin a little bit. I've, I've, I deal with it a lot better now, but just be aware if you want me to create a video 
repeating over and over again, like, where's this video? Where's this video is not helping, okay? Um, so just a little thing. Now, you can definitely ask of videos you want to see, but just realize I can't always make them, okay? You know, I only have a certain amount of time, and I only can make a certain amount of videos, and sometimes I don't have the resources to make certain videos. But I want to know from you guys specifically who are listening to this podcast, and we're towards the end of it, which means um, the really serious, serious players are probably the only ones listening right now. Um, let me know what type of videos you want to see. Do you want to see a certain skill demonstrated? Do you want to see certain drills? You know, you want to see a certain player? Co- I don't know what it is. Let me know because, you know, the more I know what you guys want, the more I can, you know, produce content that aligns with that. And ultimately, you know, I do I do want to make videos I want to make, but I do want to make videos that you guys want to see. I want to make videos you guys think will help you. So whether, you know, whatever it may be. Okay, so leave me any comments or suggestions about that down below. Um, also like and share this podcast, you know, um, share it with all of your teammates who you think will benefit from the topics we went over today or share a previous podcast, doesn't matter. If you're new to Simply Soccer and you've listened all the way to the end, I, you know, again, like I say, every podcast, you, you are the man or woman, uh, depending on what you are. Um, thank you. You know, this that's great that you're willing to listen to, you know, like a 26, 30 minute podcast um, when you don't even know who I am. So that's that's a pretty awesome thank you. You should definitely consider subscribing because we do this every week and we release regular videos every single week as well. Okay, and um, we'll do the hashtag. Hashtag is going to be, we'll do, what have we talked about? We've talked about futsal. We'll do hashtag futsal um, simply because I think we've already done hashtag humble or humility in a previous podcast. So hashtag futsal. And remember, if you do a hashtag, it's more likely I'll answer your question. Um, if you have one and not necessarily, like if I don't want to answer your question, I don't like it, or I don't think it would be beneficial, or I I have a question, but it is way more likely I'll answer it because I know you've listened to the end. Um, and even if you don't have a question, hashtag futsal lets me know that you've, you've, uh, listened to the whole video. You can leave a comment. You don't need to leave a question. Um, but just put hashtag futsal, even if you don't have a question, even if you don't have a comment, but just to let me know that you've got all the way to the end, it helps me identify which players, um, are very serious about their growth their improvement, getting better, and all that. And it's always encouraging for me to see more people putting that hashtag of whatever I say, you know, in whatever podcast, um, because it shows me that there are players out there who are listening to this and learning from it. So that's always um, always very uplifting for me. All right, guys, so again, thank you for listening. Make sure you do all that stuff. Leave your questions down below. What videos do you want to see? All of that. You know, I want to make sure I'm helping you guys as much as possible. All right, thanks, guys, and I'll see you on the next video, which will be out tomorrow, or I'll see you on the next podcast. Peace.